Welcome to Comic Shop Talk. Yeah, tonight we're gonna talk about, or today, it could be good morning, I don't know, wherever you're at, whenever you're watching this. Uh, we're gonna talk about running sales. Uh, when you should do them, how you should do them. Uh, most people do them during holidays. The different holidays, you know, around Christmas. Um, so back to school, people do Christmas in July. There's a lot of different times that you can run sales. We just had a very, very, very successful sale. Um, some good news for the shop. <laughs> uh, so I've had all this stuff from before COVID that I've just been buying big collections and even small collections. And then, you know, pulling a few of the hot books that are gonna sell right away. And um, I don't do, like I've talked about before, I don't do a lot of comics on eBay, but some things that I could have eBayed I take out and then the rest just didn't fit on the floor. I had a, a full stock out on my floor, so this was just getting stacked. It was our, in our second bathroom, stacked all the way to the ceiling, all the way to the back, so I only got down to one bathroom, but that's a different kind of issue. So what we did was we did a 50% off all the comics in the store, except for our wall books. Our wall books were 25% off. I kept it at 50% for all back issues. That's the new back issues um, and all the stuff. This was the star of the show, though. All the stuff that hadn't been searched, wasn't in order, it's not alphabetized, it was just a total dig. From the moment we opened at noon until the moment we closed at six, somebody was back here digging. I was hoping to sell about 1,000 comics and we did about 2,000 comics. So very happy with uh, that, super, super happy. I used uh, Facebook and Instagram as my advertising. We didn't even put up any signs in the store. We did do word of mouth. When somebody came in and bought a comic, for two weeks leading up to this, we you know, mentioned, hey, we're gonna have a big 50% off sale. Comics that most people haven't seen before in the store, they're you know, back in the back, uh, stocked away. And basically, I had everything from Golden Age all the way up to modern books. There was no holdbacks and nothing, almost nothing was priced. There was some stuff priced, I, I noticed I think uh, from a show I did many years ago, I had some stuff priced, um, some Secret Wars stuff priced. I would say less than, I would say less than a thousand books were priced and about 8,000 book. we had about 8,000 books out. So I was pricing them as we went and you know how people don't, like I didn't have time to sit down at the computer and look at eBay. Did I probably, did somebody get a key book for $2 that was a 30 or $40 book? Yeah, po possible. But listen, I wasn't selling it anyway because it was stocked away and I didn't have, to, I don't have time to get to it. Sometimes you just have to move stuff. Also, it creates a lot of interest in your store and a lot of interest in your sales. When people can get those kind of deals uh, once in a while. If I didn't know it and pull it out earlier, it, to me, it wasn't a key issue back when I got the collection. So, you know, shame on me. Uh, I get better all the time, and I learn more books all the time. In the meantime, <clears throat> I still made money on it. I made profit. We had a really, really good weekend and put a lot of money into the bank and a lot of money into the cash to buy more comics. So that's the thing you gotta think about is you know, I know stores that turn collections away. Listen, I got enough, I have too much. You never have enough. You never have enough. Um, I don't believe in cherry picking. I don't believe in somebody bringing in a collection and you go, well, I need these three books for my wall and I'll pay you this much. And guys will pay up. They'll do, you know, if it's a really high-end book, like let's say Amazing Spider-Man 300, <clears throat> they, might, they might pay 60 or 70% because they have a customer that wants it and they're gonna make that 30, 40% like right away. And with doing that, uh, one, the, the person who's trying to sell the collection is then left with stuff that's not, that they're gonna get only 15 or 20 cents a book for, or maybe even less. Uh, like I've told you guys in the past, I pay eight, eight cents a book if they're not bagged and bored. 15 to 25 cents a piece if they're bagged and boarded well. I mean, you've seen some bags and boards from the 90s. 
Uh, they've been 30 years in these bags and boards, and bags and boards, if you didn't know, only last five to seven years. If you get the better quality, like the Mylites and the Mylars, um, they last 10 to 15. I don't know if I've seen one advertised at 20. I think I've seen them advertised at like 10 to 15. So even if they were in those, they would have had to have been changed at least twice for these 30 or 40 year old books. So they get pretty grimy after 30 or 40 years, um, depending on where they keep them. Yeah, that's another thing is that books in all different conditions are in here. They're, there's all from uh, 0.5s all the way up to 9.8s. So everybody was able to dig the way they like to dig and look for what they want to. For the most part, believe it or not, there was some people that were digging for money, but for the most people were filling their collections. And that was a, that was a joy too, is like real long runs of, uh, I've seen a lot of DC books selling. Um, Nightwing, Flash, uh, Batman, a lot of the Batman stuff that I had that's like in the 2014s, 2016s, uh, full, like, 20 issues of it. So that was great to see that people weren't just digging for money, they were actually filling their collections. Uh, that, that warmed my heart and gave me a little um, optimism for the, for the, the hobby. Uh, because they print these books every month, the new books. And if you don't have people that are trying to collect the whole thing, and they're just trying to buy just the issues when there's something going on at a new a first appearance, I don't have a first appearance every week, every month. So, you know, you want, you want people to be reading the whole collection. And so it was really exciting to see people buying like that. And then, you know, I had a lot of old timers that were looking for books that they remembered reading. Uh, guys my age, they were in here buying a lot of the Bronze Age stuff out, out of the boxes. But running a sale. <clears throat> Get in touch with your community, try to build. Um, we have a, we used to have a Discord, but we've moved it to a Facebook friends group, a chat group. Uh, the Discord, it became, at least on Facebook, it didn't devolve into madness, right? Discord became a little hard to handle and control. So uh, we moved it over to Facebook and you can contact your community that way. And so all your regular customers know what's going on and they, they're gonna get first invitation, let's say. Uh, and then put that out for your, for your community first, then put it out uh, in your Instagram, your Facebook, probably like maybe on a Wednesday, you send it out to all your, your customers. Friday, you put it out for the following week in Instagram. If you put stuff out too early, People forget. Life is very busy uh, and people forget. So what I do is I usually only, I wait for a week beforehand or maybe 10 days and I start it and then I, uh, I will boost it. And on the Monday I'll boost it and then I'll actually repost, not boost, but repost a new post on the Friday before the sale. We had our sale on Sunday. A lot of people do Saturdays uh, but we uh, run a lot of card events on Saturdays and it's a longer day. So we did it on Sunday. Uh, we can only do it on Sundays when we don't have our art class because our art class is usually on Sundays. So we don't have art class for two weeks. So I'm doing comics this week and gonna do um, this coming Sunday, we're gonna do toys. Uh, I'm not gonna do 50% off toys. I'm gonna do 25% off toys. But you guys have seen my basement uh, in, in earlier videos, if you haven't, go back and check it out. Uh, it is filled with toys and I need to move some of that out to make room for more stuff. So that'll all be out, uh, some really high-end cool toys. You also want to gear what your downtown is doing. Like if there's some kind of event going down on downtown, a parade, sometimes you have uh, festivals in town. Uh, they have all kinds of things that your town is running. Get involved, I've talked to this everybody about this before get involved with your community and your and your local government uh, be tied into that know what's going on because when they have an event if you can run a sale you're going to generate more income that way and the holidays are always good all the different holidays throughout the year and do them annually 
you know, get used to it. Set up a calendar. This is the day, you know, this is going to be the third week. It's just like free comic book day. It, 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 people then start to remember year after year. The longer you're there, oh, such and such date is coming up back. Do one for your anniversary. Every year that you're, you're open, throw an anniversary sale. It's a great way to get people to remember you're here. And it's a great way to actually give something back to the community for keeping you open for the year. And you might make some new customers out of it. You don't want to keep your community as small as possible. You want to make your community as big as possible. Everybody knows that. To me, it's, I just, I would rather have a thousand people spend $10 a week than 200 people <laughs> spending $500 each a week. So work on building that up because you're going to have your whales and then it's, then it's really nice. The sad thing is, is that <laughs> a lot of times it, it comes to like you have a great day like we had that great sale on a week week and it's like oh thank god we had that great sale and that will help you out and that's a good thing to do sometimes you pull it out too when the week is not going that well you go hey on Friday we're going to decide to have a sale on Sunday and it's going to be a blockbuster sale because we need to infuse some cash. We were lucky, this was a great week for us. It was going really well. Um, it was my, our opportunity, and then it, again, you know, sales a lot of times about opportunity. We had the opportunity because the art class wasn't on on a Sunday, and I have been trying to get rid of these books, and we got rid of a lot of them, and the opportunity was there. We took it, and it was successful on a week. We had a successful week, so bonus. You know, then you can put some money away for when you need a big purchase when something's coming out. Lorcana is coming out in a couple of uh, weeks and we needed the money for that. It just happened to work out and I didn't have to take it out of my pocket. <laughs> and as a business owner, uh, that's gonna happen sometimes. So make sure you are saving money for your, from your household too. Um, if you're looking to the different things, you can be an LLC as a sole proprietor and then it, it's all your money anyway, uh, whether it's in your bank account or in the business's bank account, it's all the one bank account, pretty much. Uh, you may keep them separate, but it's all your money, it's, you're, the per, you're the business. Uh, in an S Corp, there's ways to loan the business money and then have the business pay you back on a weekly or a monthly. Uh, you can collect interest, you can take it all back at, one po at any point when the business has it. It also, if you sell the business or sell out the inventory, if you're going out of business, uh, you're in first position for any money that you had lent the business. Uh, so if you have creditors, you get paid out the money you had lent first, and then the creditors get the money after that, and then anything left over after that, then you get to take all the rest of that. Uh, so borrowing money from yourself can be advantageous. If there's something you really are afraid is going to get bought at a very cheap, don't put it out. Uh, you get a lot of uh, seller's remorse from, ah, oh, you know, I wanted to put something really good in there to excite people, and then it sells, and then you're just, you're sad about it all the time. It kind of makes you angry. There was a lot of books that I gave away for, for little money this weekend, and, you know, it's made that customer very, very happy. Um, but it's not going to happen all the time. Those are the customers that come back all the time. Uh, they, they're probably going to be looking for a deal. And, you know, if you buy right, you can give them a deal. You don't have to get uh, eBay high or heritage high price in your store. If you have a book that's worthy of a several thousand dollars, uh, you maybe don't want to discount that. You might want to sell it through a different, a different way and not sell it through your store. Um, I leave a lot of stuff on my wall that probably not going to sell in the store, but it's eye candy. It kind of gives you the mystique of being a comic book collectible shop. When you have several thousand dollar item on the wall, it kind of brings legitimacy to your business in the collectibles business. Um, it's sort of like when you go to a car dealership and they have that, you know, that very limited edition car from the company like a super special Ford Mustang or something and you have one in your showroom you know people are like oh this is this is a real dealership you know that uh, Ford sees them as somebody to, to give this to um, so it bol bolsters it up and it, it creates excitement when people come in and they're you know they're looking at the wall how much is that they get all excited and it it also can make turn people into collectors 
you know, when they start looking at, oh, I used to read comics. Oh, I have that book. And they go like, it's worth that much. Then they start getting, well, maybe I should get back into collecting. One of the first things is, is oh, maybe I should, the wife uh, mostly usually says, maybe I should sell my collection. And then I get excited. <laughs> but um, I actually prefer if they start collecting again. So we talk about what comics are out now, their favorite, what their favorite characters are doing, and, and you know, we just get to talk comics. That's the other thing about the great, about the sale is, um, while they're digging back here, I'm just back here talking about, hey, what are you reading now? And I get some insight to what's going on. So a sale can be not only profitable in money, but also in data and information. Always be looking for information and data in how to run your store better. Uh, are people into Marvel and DC, or have they moved on to independence? Uh, are they mostly interested in comics that were made, you know, five to ten years ago, or are they mostly interested in the most modern stuff in the last two or three years? Are they interested in just movie collecting? Do they just want to get the characters that have been in the movies, or are they interested in runs, full runs of books, so they have the whole collection? So, information mining. All the big businesses do it. The only thing is, is they have big computers and algorithms to do it. For a small comic shop, it's word of mouth and keeping it upstairs. Uh, but maybe take notes like I do. I jot down a lot of stuff um, very chaotically. <laughs> I, I know how, how to find the stuff and nobody else would be able to, but uh, if you keep copious notes on stuff, on your, on your sales, on your, uh, what day on how much you make each day then you also can see what your traffic's like from day to day um, and when the people who are spending the largest amount of money are here you might want to put out certain things for them the higher dollar items point them in that direction uh, you should keep uh, I don't intrude on the lives of my customers I don't email anybody anything uh, I, we don't do exclusives, so I don't got to do a blast that says, hey, you know, oh, look at the new thing we got coming out. You're all going to want to, you want to pre-order. And we don't do, I don't intrude on my customers' lives because I hate that. I hate when people constantly email me. Uh, I, it usually reflects badly on my business with that company if they're constantly contacting me. And <clears throat> maybe that's not most people. Uh, but it's me, so I run my business that way. I don't call people unless, like if they haven't picked up comics in like three months, I'll, I'll call them personally, I won't email them. And I'll ask them if they still wanna keep their books or if it'd be all right if we just stopped pulling. Um, and if they wanted anything out of, out of what was left. That's how I run the business. If you run it differently, um, if you're watching this, give me some suggestions. Uh, if you don't use email and you don't use and you don't call your customers, um, maybe there's a different way you contact them. Maybe you're friends with all your customers on Facebook through your uh, business and you Facebook message them. Uh, there's so many ways to contact people now. Maybe you have some really good suggestions for us. Part of the show is showing how to run a comic shop, but it's probably not showing how to run the best comic shop. And I'm trying to get better and run a better comic shop in a way I feel has ethical integrity uh, and pushes the hobby for long term. I'm an old man. I probably won't be at this 30 years, but 10, 15, 20 more years, probably. And I'd like to see the hobby last. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe exclusives and these other things um, are the, what the hobby is going to be. If so, I probably won't be in it because I'm not a big fan. But I've gone off on a huge tangent. <laughs> Back to uh, talking about sales. Again, we talked about many times about all the different SKUs. The sale this week weekend that we did was just on comics. It wasn't the whole store, so people were focused. I learned a lot from this sale that I'm maybe on a holiday, we'll do different percentages on different items throughout the store, but I'm thinking that on future sales that they are going to be niche 
Uh, comics will be sold separately on days that uh, video games are sold. Uh, we have a big sale on video games. They'll have, a, they'll have their own percentage and that'll be the only thing in, uh, on sale in the store. The same with toys uh, or any other item. What that does is bring out that customer and that customer is gonna be focused and looking to buy those items and have that one opportunity so they might spend a little bit more than they spend usually. So I've kind of gone off on several tangents and uh, we've talked about a lot of different types of sales and a lot of different types of ways to run them. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. If you have suggestions, make my store better, man. Suge give me suggestions. What you need to get in your head is that every failure is just a learning and every success is also a, an opportunity to learn. This weekend was a huge success and I learned a lot from it. Um, and the problems we went through before, I, we learned a lot from, and we are on a really good trajectory since then. And the store is getting phenomenally better. We're getting great reactions from our community. Uh, a lot of people have stuck with us through thick and thin, and we really appreciate our customers more than anything else because they're the lifeblood, right, of the shop. When you're doing it, don't get so down on yourself that you think that there's no return. There's always a way to get uh, fix things and get better. And we did it, and I'm sure you can too. Please subscribe to this channel. Uh, Tales from the Flip Side has been great to allow me to be on here. Uh, if you want to hear some stuff that's not about comic shops, more about the industry, you can check me out over on Haven for Heroes, uh, our channel. We're getting close to 500. Help us get there. Uh, <clears throat> if you want to see a show about something, you, you, you're starting your store out and you have questions about something, Please send us a suggestion about that because it is difficult to come up with a show every week. And it was great that we had the big hiatus when we were having our troubles. It allowed us to come up with some ideas about uh, different shows. The most important thing is read comics and open a comic shop.